the cochlea comes in. The cochlea is a part of the ear. We have this visible part which is known as the pinna, the part of the external ear. So, external ear, here we have the temporal bone coated out in colors. One, two, three and four parts, petrous part, squamous part, mastoid part and the tympanic part. We have the external, we have the external auditory meatus, the cartilaginous part. The inner two-third here is the bony part. Now as you go in, you have the petrous part of the temporal bone which is in yellow. This will be housing in the middle ear as well as the inner ear. Right? The inner ear has two parts. If you want to see, here you can see. The hole has been made here in the petrous part and they have placed them and the inner ear has been placed inside this. So inside this hole would be the inner ear. Right? So in this class we are going to elaborate about a part of the inner ear. So the, the inner ear would be something like this. This is the 2, 3 by 4 tongue cochlea or the hearing system and this part green and the colored one is the balance system or also known as the vestibular system which has, has the utricle and the saculia and the three semicircular canals. Okay, angular acceleration, linear acceleration. We will not go into it. We are talking about the inner ear part or the cochlea. Okay, yeah. Now the thing is that if we take in the cochlea like this, it has a bony part outside and a membranous part inside. The bony part is known as the bony labrum and the membranous part is known as the membranous labrum okay so if you open up or unfold it it will come out straight like a cube like this will it it will come out like this and then if you turn it out it goes in like this two three by four two three by four turns like a snail it becomes a cochlea clear so this is the cochlea to have a better view of how the bony labrum and the membranous labrum are located we take these two clay, orange and purple. This orange part would be the membranous labyrinth, let's say. We place it inside the bony labyrinth, like this, and wrap out the bony labyrinth around it. Okay? So the membranous labyrinth is no more visible, and we can turn it out like this. So we have two, three by four turns. Same cochlea, we unfold it this way, make it straight, we unfold it this way, make it straight and then cut it open for ourselves. We cut open, then we can see we have a membranous labyrinth which is in orange and then there is a bony labyrinth around it which is in purple. So membranous labyrinth, bony labyrinth. If we zoom into this particular membranous labyrinth and bony labyrinth part, then we'll have something like this, which will be visible. So this is a section of the cochlea duct, very commonly seen in the textbook pictures. So here we can see the uh, different uh, channels, like one, two, three, the scala vestibuli, scala tympanic, and the scala media, the basal membrane, and the organ of corti on it. Okay. So this is a very common picture, which is often seen in the textbooks. Today we are going to elaborate upon this. To understand this, a larger model has been made up and this model has been made up by Eric Zara who have uh, done this really wonderfully. So if you see this, then uh, it's the same cochlea duct which has been represented to give a three-dimensional uh, feel of it. So here you can see we have the basal membrane, this is the basal membrane. This part would be the resonous membrane. So the cone between the basal membrane and the resonous membrane would be the scalar media. The channel above it would be the scala vestibuli and the channel below it would be the scala tympani. We have perilymph. These both of these are connected to each other at the what? There is a connection between both the ducts. Where? At the tip of it. Helicotum. Yes, it's known as helicotum. So, the fluid in this and the fluid in this would be similar. And the name of the fluid is known as perilymph. The fluid inside the scala media would be known as the endolymph. Yeah. So, we have the perilymph here and the endolymph 
inside this. This is the basilar membrane. The basilar membrane houses a set of organelles known as the organ of cortex. So this is the organ of what? Cortex on the basilar membrane. So we will understand now exactly what is there in the organ of cortex. The organ of cortex, if you see, would be having some hair cells. The hair cells are of two types primarily. One, cells which are directly concerned with hearing and cells which are supporting in nature. The cells which are directly concerned with hearing are known as hair cells. Remember, hair cells are also there in the vestibular part of the inner ear. But here we have two types of cells. The first type of cells is known as the hair cells. Now the hair cells are the inner hair cells in green and the outer hair cells in yellow. You see that? Inner hair cells in green and the outer hair cells in yellow. The distinct feature about the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells are in terms of the number. Inner hair cells are of one row, they go back to back like this. And the outer hair cells are of three rows, they go back to back like this. The inner hair cells are flask shaped. You see this? They are flask shaped as compared to the outer hair cells which are test tube shaped, right? You can see this. The next difference would be that the stereocilia and the kinocilia, that is the projections above them of the outer hair cells are embedded in this membrane known as the tectorial membrane as compared to the stereocilia and the kinocilia of the inner hair cell which is not at all embedded into the tectorial membrane. Do you see this? Yes. So if these are embedded, then lower intensity sound should be responded to by the outer hair cells. Remember that. The other cells which you see here, or the next difference would be the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells would be separated by a tunnel. And this tunnel, which is inside the blue section, is known as the tunnel of cortile filled in with the cotyledon. Clear? Then we have other cells known as the supporting cells. Two types of cells hair cells and supporting cells. So the supporting cells are the other cells. You can see the white color cells, the red color cells, the brown color cells, the blue color cells. These all are supporting cells. And some cells, diker cells, claudia cells, inner phalangeal cells. Okay, these are different types of cells which are there. The other distinct thing between the inner hair cells and the outer hair cells are the type of nerve supply. Correct? We all know sounds come in, depending upon what is the sound that comes in, the feedback goes in and then the feedback comes back which says tune up to this particular set of sounds. That's why you will find out the cocktail party phenomenon, right? In which you can selectively hear some conversation while actually you are conversing with somebody else. That means you can focus upon certain things also. So there is a feedback coming down. This, this feedback comes down because of the descending pathway. So we have a set of nerves which take information up in the pathway known as the ascending system and a set of nerves which bring down information. Okay. So we have the CNS linka, cochlear nucleus, superior auditory complex, lateral meniscus, inferior colliculus, median genicular body and auditory cortex, ascending pathway and descending pathway coming down from the cortex to the inferior colliculus to the superior olivary complex to the cochlear nucleus still the stapedial muscle in the middle ear. Okay. So we have a descending pathway also. So we will be having a set of afferent nerve fibers and a set of efferent nerve fibers. Correct? So here if you see 90% of the supply to the outer hair cells would be from the efferent nerve fibers which are coded out in red while 90% of the supply to the inner hair cells would be from the afferent fibers. Information going up is given by the inner hair cells. The inner hair cells would be giving the information which is going up in the ascending pathway and the outer hair cells would be, would be supplied mostly 90% by the set of fibers which are bringing information down or the descending pathway. Correct? So, afferent and efferent fibers. 
There are other things also, the stria vascularis, which provides out quite a bit of nutrients and other required things for the organ of body to be active. Clear? The tectorial membrane, which has its own architecture to support out the hearing mechanism. Fine, we know what's the base, we have the high frequencies, towards the effects, we have the low frequencies. This runs through the entire cochlear duct and is responsible for giving adequate amount of hearing and hearing sensitivity to us. So the organ of cortai in the cochlea is actually the point where all the mechanical vibrations get transmitted into electrical nerve impulses which are in turn taken up and analyzed out. That's why the organ of body or the cochlea is known as the end organ of hearing. This is the point where the conversion from a mechanical energy to a electrical energy happens. In cochlear implants, we try replacing out the organ of cochlea. The electricity which is produced out is done with the help of an electrode which will be directly giving the electrical stimulation to the nerves below which is to be carried up and analyzed out. Remember in cochlear implants, that's why one problem is there, we cannot give you the descending pathway. Things will be very loud to the person. Okay, we are giving electrode which is converting out the sound into electricity and feeding out the nerve fibers which are in turn taken up but the descending fiber we cannot replace it out. So that is one of the minus points of the cochlear implants. Okay, you understand the organ of Yeah, thank you.